Okay, tonight you guys are going to be taking a look at Unit 2, Lesson B, Literal Equations. Your objective for this section is to be able to solve a literal equation. Now, we have solved equations in the last two videos, so we are going to be able to follow some of the same steps. The biggest difference here when we start to look at our examples is, instead of having the numbers, we're going to replace those with majority variables. So the biggest thing when we're looking at our steps is to start out by identifying which variable you're solving for. So what I like to do is kind of box it in or put a circle when we work through the examples to see what we're actually solving for. So when we solve equations, we take the inverse operation to isolate that variable. We're still going to follow those same steps. So once again, when you see addition, you should do subtraction. When you see subtraction, you should do addition. When you see multiplication, you should do division. When you see division, you should do multiplication in order to isolate that variable. The biggest thing to remember, once again, is whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other. So taking a look at our first example. Both of these examples, these formulas should be familiar to you. This first formula, where we have solve for p, i equals prt. We use this in our first unit. This is that interest equals the principal times the rate times the time. Now, remember, if we were to look back and kind of expand this out a little bit, we have the interest equals the principal times the rate times the time. Remember, it does indicate multiplication in between, but we don't really have to show those dots when we're working in the problem here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to figure out what variable I'm solving for. So it wants me to solve for p. So eventually I want p all by itself. So in between each of these variables, I see multiplication. So to get rid of those, I am going to divide both sides by r and t. Now, when I rewrite here, I have i equals, or i over rt equals p. As long as p is all by itself on one side of the equal sign, then we solve for that variable. So this is what your final answer should look like. Solving for a literal kind of helps us manipulate the different variables so that we could solve for different things depending on what the actual problem gives us. So if we look at our second example, it says solve for m. And then our formula is y equals mx plus b. You guys should have maybe have seen this before. This is called slope intercept form. This will become especially important when we start to graph. This is our slope intercept form. Remember, this is my, the m is my slope and the b is my y intercept. So what they want us to do is they want us to solve for m. So I'm going to go ahead and start out by kind of boxing my m in. So if I look, it's being multiplied by x and b is being added to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract b from both sides. So now I have y minus b equals mx. Now, I still want to have that m by itself. So the next thing I'm going to do is divide both sides by x. So now when I rewrite, I have y minus b over x equals m. Now, if we take a look to kind of check our answer, if the m is all by itself on one side of the equal sign, then we successfully solve for the indicated variable. All right? So if you take a look at the next two, you guys are going to try these in class tomorrow. Now, what we're going to do with these next three is we are actually going to write the equation so that y is a function of x. So what this direction really means is that we are going to solve for y. Meaning, we want, in the end, y equals for every single problem. So. I'm going to start out here in letter A and kind of box in my Y. And I notice that it has 3 in front of it, so it's being multiplied by 3. But it also has 9X being added to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 
9x from both sides. So I have 12 minus 9x equals 3y. I want to get this y by itself still, so I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 3. And when I do that, I need to make sure that I multiply that, or divide this by 3 and that by 3. So I have 4 minus 3x equals y. One of the things we kind of want to get you guys into the habit to is putting it back into that slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. So I'm just going to switch the order around here a little bit. So I have y equals negative 3x plus 4. So this is our answer here. We always want to have our x variable first, followed by our number. All right, so for our next one, if we take a look. We're going to isolate our y. So what I'm going to do first is I am going to subtract 2x from both sides. So I have y equals 7 minus 2x. So what we're going to do is we're done. Our y is all by itself. So the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change around the order so that that x variable is first. So I have y equals negative 2x plus 7. I want you guys to realize that whatever the sign in front is needs to remain in front of your number. All right, and finally our last one here. So we want to, once again, get y by itself. So it is multiplied by a negative 2 and has 18x added to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract 18x from both sides. So I have negative 2y equals 26 minus 18x. The next thing I'm going to do, I still want to get that y by itself, so I'm going to divide everything through by a negative 2. Now once again, we need to make sure that we divide this by negative 2 and the negative 18 by negative 2. So here I have y equals negative 13 plus 9x. And once again, I'm just going to switch my order around so that my final answer is y equals 9x minus 13. So that we go back and look at each one of these examples. We solve for y every time like they wanted us to. And then we worked it back into that y equals mx plus b. These two you guys will try tomorrow in class. So if we want to just flip to our very last example. Now this is a tougher formula. The difference here is it says we want to look at solving for h. So this is a little bit different than the other ones um, because we need to get this by itself. So if I were to rewrite, I have a equals h over 2, so h divided by 2, times the quantity b1 plus b2. So it's being divided by 2 but multiplied by that quantity. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by that quantity to get it to cancel out. So we cancel here, so I have b1 plus b2. So that cancels there. So now if I go back over and write out what I have now, I have a over b1 plus b2. This is your base 1 plus base 2 equals h over 2. So we still want to get the h by itself. At this point, is it alone? No, it's not. So remember when we had our equations in the first section, when we wanted to get rid of something that's being divided, we're going to go ahead and multiply by its reciprocal. So we're going to multiply by 2 over 1. Remember on the other side, we're also going to have to multiply by 2 over 1. So here these cancel. Now my h is going to be by itself. When I'm multiplying fractions, I can go ahead and just multiply straight across so that I have, as my final answer, 2a over b1 plus b2 equals h. 
My h is all by itself, so this would be something where I'm solving for the height of our trapezoid. Now remember, just to kind of look back, a little extra here, our trapezoid looks something like this, so we're kind of finding the area, so what's inside. So this would be if we were looking to solve for h. This you try, we'll take a look at in class. So if you guys could, go ahead and fill in the bottom part of your worksheet here. After this video, I can do this. After watching this video, I still don't know how to. And what you can do to help yourself continue with these lessons in order to understand what's going on. All right, we'll see you in class tomorrow.